Hey guys, Pondo Chicken in from the Garage Gym. It's October here in Southern California. Um, as you can see in the title of the video, I wanted to show you guys the second greatest home gym, the second greatest garage gym in the world. Now the reason I say that is because there is a lot of videos out there, there's a lot of people out there with a garage gym nowadays. Um, I've definitely had my gym since 2012 and my first garage gym tour video was about two, three years ago now, it's been so long. This is probably my third or fourth garage gym tour video. And ever since then, like I was saying, there's just a lot of, um, you know, people with garage gym nowadays, uh, beautiful garage gyms, excellent equipment. And um, uh, pretty much I wanted, you know, a lot of them say that they're the best in the world. So I want to say that uh, I have the second best uh, home gym and uh, garage gym in the world. So this is my annual tour. Um, I wanted to kind of show you guys my expression, my personal expression of what I believe is um, a really good gym, things to have, and uh, the equipment that I do have now, and the equipment that I, you know, kind of evolve from, and the things that I really want to do with it in the future. And just some recommendations on how you guys can have uh, the best gym, uh, you know, for, for your purposes. All right guys, so enjoy. Me personally, I definitely use 
the 35s, the 25s, and the 50s the most. So if I had unlimited space, then I would just get three that I like the most and use it. Or you can get one of those electrolyzed weights. But I prefer to have single weight uh, dumbbells. Um, you know, that's just personal preference. Also, a mirror is great. It gets you motivated, keeps you in check. Um, and, uh, you know, that's pretty much it for my free weight section. section of my garage gym, I like to consider this my uh, core work area. To be honest, I actually do core work everywhere in my garage gym. I like to store all my core work equipment here. A new addition to my garage gym, as you can see right here, this is my um, battle rope. It's a 1.5 inch rope by 40 feet. Definitely plenty of different workouts you can do with it. What I like to do personally is I like to do 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, and it definitely gets the core very, very, very well. Um, I have a lot of kettlebells. Kettlebell works are available in my training. I do them for both warm-ups as well as a workout in itself. Oftentimes what I do is I like to superset all my kettlebell work. Um, as you can see, I don't know if you can see it from that angle, there's a lot of bands here. Uh, definitely good for stretching. Um, they, the bands are a very good replacement, especially if you're limited on a budget space or if it's just a garage gym, there's really no reason for you to get one of those really expensive free weight motion, uh, free weight, uh, free motion cable machines. So these things are very good supplement for that. Um, as you can see right here, this is my GHD. If you haven't seen it already, I did do a video review on it. It's invaluable for a garage gym. It's really good for the posterior chain. It's good for the core too. It's a very good platform for uh, sit-ups. So I do highly recommend that. And also the, the Rogue GHD is probably the highest quality GHD I've ever used, very stable. I've had it for about two, going on three years now, and there's really nothing I have anything to complain about it. It's easy to move around also, and there's good, uh, very good wheels, uh, very, very stable. Alright guys, so as you can see right here, this is my Rogue 6 Bar Gun Rack. Um, definitely stout, very sturdy, and I like how it has a, a plastic protection for the bars that you do own. I wanted to quickly talk about the bars that I do have currently. Um, I know some of you guys are going to be asking about the ones I have missing. Anyways, the first one I do have, I use it quite frequently. Not necessarily on video, because I think it's boring to watch. But it's my curl bar. Um, you know, it's very good for curling as well as a lot of tricep work. Uh, both I need to do more of. Um, so my second bar up here, this is my Ohio Power Bar. This bar gets used the most in my garage gym. Um, this is uh, a bare steel. I don't, I don't take care of it as much as I used to. It's a little bit rusty, but I personally do like the rust factor. Um, this is my third bar right here. This is pretty much a cheapo bar from uh, Sports Authority. I think every gym needs a cheapo bar for basically beating it up. It's not the most strongest steel, but um, whenever I use things like for my landmine, I definitely throw this guy in there just because I don't want to damage the shaft, the sleeve of my better bars. My third uh, favorite bar here, sorry, my fourth, this is my uh, Aleko Olympic weightlifting bar. You'll see me use it for my cleans, my snatches, uh, pretty much anything uh, for Olympic weightlifting work. It never touches the rack. The only thing, um, th this thing definitely gets a lot of work, more so recently when I started doing Olympic weightlifts. Again, it feels amazing. It's the same one that they use in the uh, Olympic Games. So, and the last bar I wanted to talk about is my Oki deadlift bar. Um, definitely a longer bar. It gives you more of that whip. It's thinner, and the knurling is pretty much like a cheese grater. So you barely even have to use chalk anymore. So these, this is my collection of bars. Each bar definitely has, um, you know, each bar definitely sees its use throughout the year, so, yeah. My, um, pretty much my Olympic weightlifting section and my uh, deadlift section. Uh, for, for those uh, workouts, I like to use my Olympic uh, bumpers. I got these from the Rogue Fitness Games 2014. 
These are my favorite bumpers that I've had so far. Granted, I've only had um, uh, the high temps, the pen blades, and this is my third set. This is the CrossFit ones. I like the way they feel. I like the way they work. I like the way they, um, the sound that they make when they hit the ground. I like the matte feeling of it. I like how it has a lift. And I definitely like the colors. Um, and also, the, my favorite fact is this is the one that uh, Rich Frenning as well as Camille Blanc Bazinet won in the 2014 games, which was my favorite games thus far. Also, if you're going to do a lot of barbell work, it, it pays to have a really nice uh, deadlift jack. And this is the one I got from Rogue. I think this is the version 2.0. The reason it's 2.0 is they added the plastic inserts to protect your bars, especially if you have really nice bars like um, a Lego Olympic weightlifting bar. This is a uh, rack, a, a bumper plate rack that I made by myself. Pretty much, you know, I took all the measurements of the, um, the bumpers, cut the piece of wood to length, and made some dividers in the middle and just screw it all together. It's extremely simple. And I got that, um, my rack pull, uh, what's it called? I got this idea from um, Nick Wright, bodybuilder, I think. He was, he's a YouTube, famous YouTuber as well. I use it for rack pulls. It's a very simple design, just some wood and some rubber on top to protect the, the bumper plates. And as you can see, I got some change plates. Also, you definitely need to get uh, some collars that are very reliable and the HG collars you can't lose with. Or as you can see, I did hang my uh, punching bag into the ceiling with a very, very cheap design. I was looking on Amazon for a punching bag hanger and everything was about $100. So what I decided to do was just take a piece of thick plywood, uh, bolt it all to, to two separate studs for extra stability, and then you know, kind of just hooked it up to the chain of the punching bag. Very effective and uh, inexpensive way to hang a uh, punching bag if you were so inclined. I also have a set of MDUSA rings up on the ceiling. They're attached to individual studs for ex extra stability. I like to use that for, um, you know, ring work, for leg raises, for pull-ups, for all things like that. My garage gym is nine feet tall, so I, I rarely ever do uh, any muscle-ups or anything of that matter. My, um, the bread and butter, kind of like the main section of my garage gym. Every gym definitely is going to need some sort of power rack in order for you to do the majority of your work, your strength work, your free weight work, and somewhere to be safe. Um, I've done a review on this as well. It's something that I've had. It's very near and dear to me. This is the Rogue uh, RM6 version 1.0. I like the version 1.0 a lot better than the new ones that they've been coming out recently just because I like the matte black finish. Also, the steel here is a lot thicker than the ones that they do currently put out. This is a 7 gauge steel, um, which is, I would say, maybe twice as thick as the 11 gauge steel that they have, that they're putting out now. Don't quote me on that. I wouldn't know that exactly. You would have to probably talk to Rogue directly. Um, you definitely can do a lot of work in here. You could do, you could do your bench work. You could do your, you could do rack pulls. You could do pull-ups. You could do squats. Just anything you can imagine. Pretty much if you only have one section of my garage and, and, and you wanted to create something in, in your, uh, you know, if you're limited in space, this doesn't take too much room to be honest with you. This is probably the best bang for your buck. Um, so the measurements of my uh, rack, um, they're a little bit different than the ones that you would see online. I had rope cut it down and I had rope make it a, as narrow as possible. Not, not, not narrow, but as uh, not as deep as the ones that they sell out originally. The space in between these two posts right here, as you can see, it's 30 inches, and the back two posts between the business end and the storage end is only 17 inches. So I made it so that it'll, the whole rack is actually 55 inches deep. And width-wise, they're still gonna be as wide as the business end of the barbells, but um, you know, I just wanted to save as much room as possible, and I had them kind of make it work for me. So as you can see right here, this is my Avanco. I think it's O-M-E-Z-H plates. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Wow, I have six 45s. I have a 35, a 25, a couple 10s, fives, and two and a half. These are definitely one of my favorite parts of my gym. Um, I feel like I need to get stronger in order to do it justice because I've only 
um, used up to five plates, you know, on the deadlift. Um, one of these days, I want to get back into pulling maybe 600 pounds, but as for right now, I'm kind of happy with my progress, other than just strength. You know, there's definitely more in the gym than just strength. Um, as you can see right here, this is my uh, monolift attachment. It's an amazing piece of equipment. It's great. It's very good if you're a power lifter. If you want to get stronger, um, it's really good for the handoffs as well on the bench press. And um, I also did, if you are so inclined to watch my review video of it, it's probably in the uh, review section down below. And um, as you can see right here, I got some, some chains. Those are 50 pounds a piece. Um, so a total of 100 pounds on the bar. As you can see right here, these are my sore neck safety straps. Um, I got this way before uh, Rome finally came out with their adjustable, quick adjustable straps. I love them because of, first of all, the color red is obviously my favorite color, if you can't tell. Um, and also, they're very easy to adjust. So, it probably takes maybe less than a minute to adjust it from squatting to benching to rack pose. So it's very simple, very easy. Also, as you can see right here, I have a camera. I did a review on that if you want to watch that. And um, it connects to the, to the base of the, the squat rack. Very stable platform, tons of different workouts. An element to my garage gym, a recurring theme, is that everything I have in here has a lot of different purposes. Um, a great example of that, that would be, would be the, uh, the landmine itself. There's just literally every muscle group in your body you can work out a landmine, you can work out legs, you can work out arms, core, back, chest, anything. Landmine will definitely do it for you. So the thing about it also, I want to go on a quick tangent, is make sure everything you have in your garage gym has more than just one purpose. Um, another thing I want to talk about is my bench, the best bench in the world in my opinion. It's a Rogue Fitness AB2. I love Rogue Fitness products, everything that they put out is definitely high quality and you definitely get what you pay for. I also have a review on that. There's another quick section, I have my, definitely have my weightlifting shoes here. These are my favorite, probably most used. This is my Adi Powers from um, Adidas. Um, I also have a lot of the light TRs, uh, I have some Nano Metcons. Um, uh, Reebok Nanos as well. Reebok Nanos are probably my favorite CrossFit shoe, but the, uh, the, the Nikons are a close second. I also have a bucket here with a lot of stuff that, um, that would be, you know, difficult to classify. There's, a, there's an ab roller, there's a rumble roller. Uh, I got my slingshot here, some rebounds, some wrist wraps, a lot of protective equipment that definitely, you know, doesn't really need to be introduced, but very, very important. Also, there's another piece that I love here. This is my Sweat Ink, my program, my tricep pulling. Absolutely very um, important, super, ne uh, super necessary for any question. Another thing I wanted to talk about in the, uh, having a great garage gym is the environment that you have in it. Um, I decided to paint my color red and gray because these two colors definitely sets me in the right mood, uh, puts me in the right environment to be motivated and lift more weight. It's, it looks better than just, you know, plain white. Some people like white though, some people like green, some people like blue, but for me red and gray definitely works. I also have several uh, posters and uh, American flag and things like that. Like I said, it's all about the environment. Um, another thing that is really important is the lighting. Um, in the ceiling I put, I installed one, two, three uh, strip lights. Um, pretty much a uh, dark, dingy gym. Some people, it might work for some people, but for me I like, I definitely do, like a lot of lighting. Um, it, it looks good also when you check your physique in the mirror, but lighting is extremely important as well. Alright guys, so that's pretty much my garage gym tour. This is 2016 garage gym tour. I know there's going to be a lot more coming. There's going to be a lot of changes, um, you know, to be had in the future. And I'm definitely enjoying uh, everything that I've had and every, all the progress that I'm making with it. It's definitely an investment. I feel that it's one of my best investments in my life because I'm definitely um, improving in my personal fitness. I'm definitely putting it to use. Um, and I'm, you know, getting definitely the most bang for my buck for everything that I have in here. Now, another quick tip I would like to give you guys who are thinking about having a garage gym is also to always kind of assess what you guys use the most and what, you know, you kind of rarely ever use. I know some people like just things just to have them, but uh, garage gym is a, having a garage gym, is, it's a, you, there's a lot of things that are limited. 
there's obviously limited finances, but the most important thing is the space. You don't, you definitely don't want something sitting around your garage room that you're not going to use the most. One of the things people ask me um, is why I got rid of my um, reverse hyper. Okay, the reason I got rid of it is one, it took a lot of room, and two, there was really only one workout that you could do with it. I know there's a lot of people on the in the garage gym forums and stuff using it for stuff like rows and things like that, but. Um, the reason I got rid of it is because it took a lot of real estate, it was very expensive and there was only one thing that you could do with it. Granted, I was able to reach my deadlift goal of 555 with it, I was able to squat 500 pounds by using it daily, but still there was only one workout that I could use with it and I didn't really get the bang for my buck for it. But if it definitely benefits you and you, you can see yourself using it and definitely putting justice to it, um, definitely do get it, but if you find that there's something that you don't use as often as you thought you would, but you believe somebody else would benefit from it, Craigslist it, sell it, and buy something that you could use more often and daily and uh, get the most bang for your buck. All right guys, so that's my gym. I would like to thank you guys again for watching. I would like to thank you guys for subscribing. And uh, please do enjoy and uh, you know watch my future videos. Hit that like button if this definitely did help you out whatsoever. Uh, if you have any questions, please do leave it in the qu uh, comments section below, and I will do my best to answer you in a timely fashion. Um, I appreciate everybody for watching, and I will see you guys next time. All right, peace out.